In this technique, I will teach you how to create a shadow which you can control with a slider and with a direction tool. Hello there and welcome back in the third technique we'll learn today of adding the flat shadows into our composition. This will be a really interesting one because we'll use a few expressions, but don't worry, they will be very, very simple. I'll tell you everything what to do and where to write it and we'll use the simplest effect, which is drop shadow. So let's get down to it. I have my composition ready. That's a simple animation. Perhaps we don't even need those wiggle effects. So let me go to effects and delete all those effects, the wiggle and the transform, because we don't need them and they'll just mess things up. We can add them later if you want it. And let's start working on this. Once you have the layer selected, you want to attach the flat shadows to, Go to effect and type in slider control, put in the slider control as the first effect and now go to drop shadow. I have drop shadow here and duplicate this effect. So we have two times drop shadow. So now you should have the slider control at first, drop shadow and drop shadow number two. I will open them also here on the bottom. So we see what do we edit, open the effect and I have all three effects right here. Please go to the first drop shadow, go to distance and by holding the left alt key or option key if you are on the Mac, click on this little stopwatch to open the expressions for the distance property in the drop shadow effect. We will write down here a simple expression. Delete everything that is here and also do not worry, you will only have to write this once because later on we will also save a preset so you don't have to bother anymore again with this. Just write this property dot property group one dot property index. This property is distance. Property group one is the container which is holding the distance, which is drop shadow in this case. Property index is the index number of the distance value. Property index will change the value with each new addition of the effect we will apply. So if we copy over the effect, it will have a distance of one more because in the index panel, it will be one new effect. It's not like I got to this on my own. There is a great article. It was written a few years ago from Toby Pittman. Credits to you, man. Thank you very much. And he used the same thing that we are using in this technique, this property, property group one, property index, and he's explaining exactly what this is. And he used the same technique to apply strokes, which will grow automatically. He shows it here and he shows it later that with each index number, the stroke is growing and the opacity is lowering down because he connected both the opacity and the strokes here to one master width layer. I just wanted to show you where this all came from. Okay, I click away. I'm ready with the expression. Let's move this to the side so you will see the expression better. And this distance has a index number of two because there is the slider control effect. If I would delete this effect, it would have the index number of one because it's the first effect here. And this is how we will repeat this effect and it will automatically raise the distance number until we have a full flat shadow. If you want to be perfectly precise and don't want a two here, you want to start from one or zero, just go at the end of the expression and hit minus one. I will do so and now the distance is one. The last step I need to take here is making plus, clicking on the pick whip and connecting it with the slider. The slider will help us make the shadow longer or shorter because it will delete the effect or add the effect. Okay, do not worry, we are complete with this expression. You don't need to do anything else. You just write the first expression. You can write minus one here if you want to start from one and you hit plus and pick with the slider control so we can easily control the effect later on. Now I take this expression and copy it over to drop shadow two. In the same place, just put it over the distance. I go to distance, I alt click here on the stopwatch 
I just copy it over and there's nothing else I want to do. As you see, automatically it got the index number of 2. Now if I duplicate this effect, of course it will have the index number of 3. But one last thing I want to make to make my life easier is linking the direction because I only want to set this direction once and it should be applied to all the effects. This is achievable very very simple just as previously I hit the direction on the drop shadow number 2, hold the left alt or option key, click on the stopwatch, just use this little pick whip and connect it with the direction of the first effect. Because drop shadow number 2 will be repeated but drop shadow number 1 will be our control layer. As you see as I change the direction, the direction also changes for drop shadow number 2. Let me close this down, I hit drop shadow 2 and I hit control or command D to duplicate it. I want to duplicate it about 20, 30 or 40 times, something like that, until I get a full effect here. Oh, I see there is a little mistake, it's because the opacity is wrongly set. Let me delete those effects. Make the opacity on the first drop shadow 100, of course on the second also because we will copy it over. Alright, now we are ready to copy. I select this effect and I duplicate it about 30 or maybe 40 times to be entirely sure and that it works in each and every composition I'll make in the future. I go to the top because this is too much effect. I, ah, I clicked wrongly. Select all effects. Close them down and now we have the effect preset ready. Look what the slider does. If I move the slider to a negative amount of 40, because I have 40 copies here, it will close down to 0. If I want to have a longer shadow, I just move it over. But you need to be careful not to go over 0 too much. Let me place it at 0. Also for the direction. It will be so simple to change the direction. I just click here, I drag it over and the direction is working automatically because I have all drop shadows has linked to this one direction option. So this is a very simple way to do it. One thing we can repeat from the steps we made before is adding, of course, the fill effect. I double click on it. Of course, I want a... I want maybe a blue shadow with the opacity of 50% about and as previously also helpful CC compo you already know this double click on CC composite uncheck RGB in front it's all perfect and now we are ready and set the fill effect will help us to change the color the direction slider will change the direction of the shadow and we can rotate it as much as you want we can of course also keyframe it to create nice animations and the slider control will allow us to create shorter and longer shadows. If there are some mistakes, you can always go to the drop shadow and just duplicate it more. If the composition is bigger or you really need to make the shadow very very long, just duplicate a few more times and you are ready to go. I will now save this preset, I will select all of the effects, I go to animation, save animation preset, I will make it LS technique 3 because it's the third technique we are learning and we are done with this effect. You need to be careful with one little thing but this wouldn't be a, prob a big problem because perhaps it won't be visible but let me delete a few effects. If you drag over more effects, for example I will drag one CC composite more and place it on the top above the drop shadow, the drop shadow distance will be bigger by one index. If I place zero here, of course, because now the slider control was uh, making the distance bigger. But now it starts from two. If I would have 10 effects here, it would start from 11 or 12. So always remember that there shouldn't be too much effect before this drop shadow. Or while creating, if you are creating this live, you can always, you can always place a negative number here of minus something if you are creating this effect live but I prefer to save the preset and just place it as the first one or even pre-composing a composition to be completely sure that I'm not deleting everything and that I'm working non-destructive. So this is when it comes about to the third technique. I know it was a little bit more difficult and advanced. That's why it's the third technique, not the first. 
I just wanted to show you really several possibilities and teach you a few After Effects tricks along the way, because when working in After Effects, sooner or later you will come across expressions and it's better to know something about them than to don't know anything. I wasn't digging deeper in those expressions because this is a rather beginner friendly class and I don't want to swarm you with informations because expressions are very advanced and this is a topic for a completely separate lesson. At the point where we are, I believe you should be able to follow the steps I took and implement them in your composition. Thank you very much for holding through this long in this lesson and for taking part in the lesson. You are a gem, really, thank you very much.